Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report for July 2013. I'm your host, Dennis Skupinski. One of the new technologies that emerged during the First World War was that of the submarine, a craft that could sail underwater and launch torpedoes. In German, it was called the undersea boot. It became known as the U-boat. The U-boat sank millions of tons of shipping in the North Atlantic. Also, it killed countless sailors and soldiers during the First World War. The name U-Boat brought terror to everyone who heard it. So why was a U-Boat sailing in the Great Lakes? We will answer this question and also see what's happening on the national stage for the World War I Centennial. Centennial National News Report from Kansas City, Missouri. As the centennial for the Great War approaches, the National World War I Museum at the Liberty Memorial took a significant step by naming Matthew C. Naylor as President and CEO. Mr. Naylor said, I'm privileged to be part of the National World War I Museum at this significant juncture in its history. The museum is a very important community asset, one that has no comparable institution anywhere in the world and I look forward to charting its path into the coming years locally, nationally, and internationally. The wrecked hull of UC-97, a German submarine, lays at the bottom of Lake Michigan in over 200 feet of water about 20 nautical miles off the coast of Highland Park, Illinois. UC-97 was a German mine lane submarine. It was laid down in late 1917 at Hamburg, Germany. It was built by Bloom and Voss and launched on March 17, 1918. She was never commissioned in the Imperial German Navy because of the armistice on November 11th, which ended hostilities before the submarine was ready to sail. UC-97 was surrendered to the British authorities according to the terms of the armistice. The United States Navy expressed an interest in acquiring several of the surrendered German submarines for display purposes in conjunction with a victory bond drive. Early in 1919, UC-97 and five other U-boats were allotted to the United States. Officers and sailors went to England in March and took possession of the boats on March 23, 1919. Soon thereafter, UC-97 was placed in a special commission for the voyage to the United States. Lieutenant Commander Holbrook Gibson was in command. The American crew worked feverishly to prepare the submarine for voyage across the Atlantic. However, faulty machinery kept the UC-97's crew from completing their mission until she was well out to sea. Thus, she put to sea with UB-88, U-117, UB-148 on April 3, 1919. The USS Bushnell, submarine tender number two, had a tow her. However, by late afternoon of her first day at sea, the U-boat's American crew succeeded in getting her diesel engines running, and for the remainder of the voyage, she moved under her own power. Her unit, which received an interesting name, Ex-German Submarine Expeditionary Force, sailed first to Ponta Delgata in the Azores, and thence to Bermuda, and from Bermuda the four submarines and the USS Bushnell set course for New York City. When they arrived on April 27th after a rough voyage, the boats became the objects of interest to a horde of visitors, reporters, photographers, tourists also joined Navy Department technicians and civilian submarine builders in swarming over and through UC-97 and the other boats. Soon, however, the U-boats received their itinerary for their victory bond campaign. Of the six regions in which the coastal areas and major waterways of the United States were divided to, UC-97 drew the Great Lakes region. That is, assignment required her to negotiate the locks of the Canadian-controlled St. Lawrence Canal. UC-97's refusal to break with traditional practice on board a man of war and fly the Union Jack at the fore caused trouble at each Canadian port of call along the way. 
However, her commander, Officer Lieutenant Commander Charles A. Lockwood Jr., who later rose to fame in World War II as a commander of submarines Pacific Fleet, stuck to his guns and was later vindicated by Canadian naval officers who applauded his pretentious observance of time-honored naval tradition. Once she cleared the locks and entered the Great Lakes, UC-97 began a whirlwind series of visits to United States ports, large and small, along the coast of Lakes Ontario, Erie, Huron, and Michigan. Though scheduled to visit Lake Superior ports as well, the U-boat had a cut shorter voyage because of wear on the engines. In August 1919, she started back down the coast of Lake Michigan toward Chicago, where she arrived at the beginning of the last week of the month. At Chicago, her crew turned UC-97 over to the Commandant, 9th Naval District. She was laid up at the Great Lakes Naval Station until June 7, 1921, when she was taken out into Lake Michigan and sunk as a target during a Naval Reserve gunnery drills by the USS Wilmot, formerly known as the SS Eastland. Before using UC-97 for target practice, she was stripped of all armaments, propulsion, and navigation equipment. The German U-boat's wreckage was located in 1992 by A&T Recovery, but its location has not been released to the public. But what we do know is that it's located about 20 nautical miles off the coast of Highland Park, Illinois, in 200 to 300 feet of water at the bottom of Lake Michigan. At the present time, there is a team that is working on raising UC-97. They are studying the best way to raise the ship and also what they have to do to preserve the ship once it comes to the surface. There are plans to make a documentary television show about this, so look in the future for the story of UC-97. And remember that you heard it first here on Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report, letting you know what Michigan's contribution to the First World War was. It's a long way to Tipperary.